thumbnail. So this again, another picture I've taken from the Friday Kids subreddit, the best subreddit in the world. Go visit it. This is pretty insane, isn't it, right? This is pretty insane. So there's, first of all, with me, again, I'm not someone that should be saying anything because I know it sounds a bit weird, but I have a thing about hands anyway. Maybe it's because I've got pretty decent ones myself because I think there's a bit of privilege involved in mine because I have some, they're, they're decent enough in terms of what they look like. But I'm very particular about hands and I have a thing about hands when it comes to people's nails and it comes to people's just general condition of their hands. I'm one of those dudes that always carries around hand moisturizer. I'm always making sure, especially when you're black, you could, you could always have these little dry parts here. So I'm always making sure these are not dry and stuff. I'm just picky about that kind of thing. And it's always funny whenever you see people, because we've all got different type of hands. You see people with different type of fingers and how they kind of, in how they're shaped, how long they are, or usually the thumbs are always the interesting ones, right? Some people have thumbs that are really short, really long, whatever it may be. But then I remember do, seeing this quite often a lot, and I remember not knowing what it was all about, right? People that have fingers that look like this. I never could quite work out what it was about. And then I remember one time being on Reddit and having to type in, I think, what did I type in? Um, I think it was Club Nails or something, right? club net club or something club is it club nails i think so something around this i think this is what it was yeah this is what it is so it's this shit allegedly that's what they say on google i'm not sure if this is true but it's what they say on google so they say on google that this is a clubbing of fingers and toes right and this is the following uh clubbing of this uh, clubbing is changes sorry clubbing is changes get off move 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 so i can see it changes in the area under and around the toenails and fingernails that occur with some disorders the nails also show changes the considerations common symptoms of clubbing nail bends or soften um bed soften sorry the nails seem to be floated to the firmly attached the nails form a sharper angle in the cuticle the last part of the finger maybe appear large or bulging the nail curves downwards yes yeah, so you get a lot of that kind of down towards weirdness going on there and the causes are fucking interesting, right? Causes. Um, lung, cancer, lung cancer is the most common cause of clubbing. Clubbing can also occur with heart and lung disease, um, heart defects, chronic lung defects, infections of the lining of the heart. Other causes include celiac disease, cirrhosis um, of the liver, um, wh wh whatever this is called, dysentery. What's dysentery? Que es dysentery? Que es dysentery? Come on, computer. Tell me dysentery. What is dysentery? No idea. I've never, never heard of dysentery. Can that load or is my computer going to crash? Oh, it might crash. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, Graves disease, overactive thyroid gland, and other types of cancer. Now, I don't think this dude has any of these things, but it is quite interesting to see this weirdness of the hand thing, isn't it? But I'm wondering, is this a common thing to do with... The thing that's really, I'm wondering, which is really surprising because I feel like the body is fucking amazing, right? In terms of how quickly it can show you how the body's amazing in its ability to kind of display exactly what's, what you're kind of putting in your body quickly. It's not like a short thing because the thing that I'm kind of curious about is that from what I know of Brendan, again, I used to be an old T5K fan, so I'm clued up when it comes to this guy, right? I'm not some, like, stranger that kind of stumbled upon Brendan because everyone's kind of getting on his, getting on him because his comedy sucks. I was a fan of the show. I loved the show when it was on Fox. I actually well, was a fan of their comedy. I thought Brian was funny. I thought the chemistry was pretty good in the podcast. I enjoyed their interviews, blah, 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 blah. Now, I know that Brendan's only started to drink really heavily in the last few years beforehand when he was on t5k on fox and stuff and before even maybe before then he was a person that would always brag about how he didn't need to drink how he could have fun not drinking how he didn't understand how all these comedians drink that's why he was working so hard that's why he was able to get showtime special so quickly that's why he was getting all these bookings and doing all these tours that was a thing that he used to kind of use as a kind of bragging point as a thing to kind of make himself feel better than other people then whenever i don't know what happened Actually, I do know what happened. I think there was one occasion where he went on JRE, if I'm not mistaken, and Joe Rogan mentioned something that he does. You know when Joe Rogan mentions like he's like pre-comedy comedy set rituals and i think one of his rituals that he does that he kind of um kind of you know interpreted from dave Chappelle was that he would sometimes take a, a hit of a cigarette like he would just take one cigarette take a couple of hits of it and says because he doesn't smoke regularly the nicotine will kind of hit him really good and kind of get him ready to do a set and i remember one of the other things he used to say was that before he does a set joe rogan was like he would take a beer and a shot or something i think that's his common thing you have a beer and a shot just as it's about to go on he won't take it to, to the stage just how it's about to go on to kind of get him ready and get him kind of in like the get him in the same mood as everybody else in the room 
And I guess for whatever reason, Joe, Brendan heard that because I guess he never knew Brendan, uh, Joe drank. He just assumed Joe was like, you know, not a drinker like he was. And then he started to dabble into the whole whiskey and beer thing. And then obviously he found his way in whiskey. So that was when he started to drink really heavily. Now I'm curious, could you, could you, people, people in the chat, do you think it's possible for the body to show effects of heavy drinking and like poor diet in your nails like that in only the space of like five years or so? Like, could you, ha could you go from having, let me just put it on my camera. Could you go from having somewhat n normal quote unquote nails? Cause my nail, my normal nails aren't normal, but you know, in whatever. Could you go from having those kind of nails to those kind of nails in like five years due to just drinking and having a shit diet? Is that possible? What do you guys think in the chat? In five years, could that happen? Easily. Okay, people are saying easily. Jesus Christ. Okay, cool. Because <laughs> that's fucking scary. That is really scary. If the body can really deteriorate to that, that result. People are saying, his face has been swelling. Yeah, true, true. His face is the, is the obvious one, right? We've got this picture here. His face here is the obvious one. This face is clearly a face of somebody that your face looks like he's retained a lot of liquid in there. And that's clearly a face of somebody that, that drinks a lot. We know that, right? For sure. People are saying, wow. The robot saying for sure. Uche is saying yes. Um, I'm in med school. So Uche said yes. Wow. Okay, cool. Good to know, man. That's why I'm so scared about not getting too aggressive and fucked. It's just a sign of credit. That's why I'm, too, I'm, I'm really cautious about not getting fucked up and, and shit. Because I think I mentioned it in the podcast that I do, obviously. Make sure you check it out. Yeah, because no Zynga show. I mentioned it in the podcast, but I'm actually really looking forward to Sober October this year. I'm really looking forward to it. Because I think last year or the, the last time they did it, I kind of missed out. No, I kind of fell short by like maybe the last four days or something. I kind of broke, right? And I probably went out and got in when it got fucked. But the last few months, especially, I've been going crazy, right? I've been going out drinking. I've been fucking snorting as many lines as possible, taking as many pills as possible, going absolutely nuts. And obviously, the thing that really hurts me the most is definitely the alcohol. Like, I definitely feel like I can't handle hangovers at all. I think hangovers have killed me now, especially since the pandemic. I feel like the lockdown really kind of killed my ability to drink. I can't drink as much as I did in the past. Um, I can maybe drink when I go to a bar, but I can't do the whole pre-drinking thing. And the pre-drinking thing here in the UK is really big because I think it's the drinks are so expensive. But everybody, before they go out and nights out, we always pre-drink at home. We always drink on the way to the club. Then we drink outside the club and then we drink in the club, right? So we're always drinking, but I can't drink anymore. So the most thing I can do is basically drugs and even drugs as well. You know, you can't do that all the time. It costs money and also it kind of takes away a day. <clears throat> and then I end up finding out I've kind of wasted loads of days and stuff. And I'm just kind of in bed and all that stuff. So I actually like when I do these things, cause I've, I've done them before. I've done like sober January. I've done the whole sober October thing I, and I do them quite often. And sometimes I'll go like, you know, a couple of months, not touching anything because it's quite nice to let yourself know that you're not kind of bound by these things. As much as I like to go out and have a party and dance and stuff, it's good to know that they don't have control over you. Like you can't go to a bar without having a drink. Now don't get me wrong. Going to a bar without having a drink is horrible. I don't understand how people that are sober can do it because it's the worst. Uh, being around people that are drunk when you're not drunk is fucking horrendous. But it's nice to know that you can do it. And it's nice to know that you also aren't relying on having a drink to have a good time. So I'm really happy that that's happening. So for more I'm saying about Brendan, I also know I have my own issues and I also know that I'm fucking looking forward to Sober October. I am so happy it's happening. I really am. I can't wait to just have a clean month of doing nothing but just working out, reading lots of books, watching lots of cool documentaries, you know, not being on social media as much because I'm going to probably do that as well and put a little, you know, um, thing down of like maybe not tweeting or maybe not using my Instagram for the whole 30 days and then just coming back, you know, looking fucking shiny, looking good and seeing how it goes from there. So I'm really, really funny, man. Honestly, I'm really on it. But that's that's the worst of the whys. If you if you like your drink, make sure you have a couple of drinks, not too much, because if you have too much, this won't happen to you, okay? Everybody in the chat, listen, listen there, please. Just make sure. Um, I was Uche saying uh, I've stopped partying for six months ago okay cool congratulations to you Uche I wish I could stop man I can't I, I, I'm addicted to the rave I'm addicted to the dance or especially me being a fucking um, wannabe DJ it's just impossible to kind of get away from that scene it's just too fun I'm too tied to it you know what I mean my part of my identity is probably wrapped in it as well there's probably a bit of that as well I feel like if I don't have the rave then who am I who am I who am I there's probably all that shit tied in it as well but there will probably come a point where I just kind of give it up because it's quite weird to be like in a nightclub with people that could be like you know 
<laughs> people that could potentially be your daughter and you're like dancing next to them, it can feel a bit weird. You know what I mean? You can feel a little bit creepy when you're in a club surrounded by so many young people and you're like there trying to keep up with your fucking old bones. <laughs> But hey, what can you do? What can you fucking do? What was I saying in the chat here? Um, the robot catcher saying, I'm high as Whole Foods. Okay, big up. Big up being high as Whole Foods. Uh, big up being high as Whole Foods. Um, what's Koya said? When you stop drinking, the gym gains go up. Go away. Yeah, of course. I, I've done it before, man. I had a. There was a time, especially pre 2019, where I was like super into, like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with like Tim Ferriss and those guys, right? So Tim Ferriss. Um, human optimization, all that kind of thing. I was on it. I was having supplements. I was like drinking like a glass of red wine with my meat and stuff because it helped to, I don't know, with your circadian rhythm and all this shit. I was trying out like, keto for the first time. Um, all this type of stuff, right? And that's when I was at 180. That's when my, I was at my lightest. I, I was actually 180. I'm actually planning to see if I can, how low I can get to the end of this year. Let's see what I can do. Cause I already lost like what, 20 pounds or so. I'm about 240 now. So I'm really trying to see how low I can get at the end of the year. But when I was 180 back then, I was all on that stuff and I hardly drank, hardly drank. And if, and if I did drink, the thing I noticed when I did, when I did drink, when I was really like, you know, clean and straight edge, one beer would get me white girl wasted. I'd be so tipsy over off one beer, off one bottle of Bex or something. It's absolutely insane. Um, it's absolutely insane. Um, a lot of people are saying, I really want to experience a festival sober and I think it's great to be fun and weird. And now I remember it. Yeah, like, like I, I think I mentioned it before in a podcast. I think I've said it many, many times. It's a common story, but I went to fucking Berlin and I went to Berghain sober like one year. I think it was like 2017, 2016. I was working for this company, which was fucking crazy, right? They, they gave me a fucking insane company card. I was able to expense everything and eat like a king and stayed in a really swanky hotel. I was working, I was working out there and I went to some conference. <clears throat> And I legitimately went to Berlin like sober, like I didn't do anything, zero, did not, not a thing. I didn't even touch fucking iced tea. I mean, I was just on the water the whole time and I had a blast, but would I do it again? Obviously not, <laughs> Jeremy, because Berlin's a fucking place where everyone's fucking spanged out their mind and high as fuck. But it was nice to know that I could do it. It was nice to know I could go to a place where legitimately you go to a toilet and all you hear is a... <laughs> That's what you hear when you go to a fucking toilet, right? No one's fucking pissing or fucking shitting. Everyone's fucking shoving shit up their ass or shoving shit up their nose and shit. So it's nice to know that you can go to the kind of place and just listen to the music, have some chats with people who are super fucked up, um, help some people get some water here and there. That, that was bit, that's what I basically, t- I turned into a fucking first aid person in there because clearly people saw that I was really sober and, and alert and shit. But it was good to know that I could do it. So I don't know what a festival will be like. If it's a, if it's a sleeping festival sober, I, I don't, I don't envy you, Uche, honestly. I couldn't do it. If it's a, it's a f- festival sleeping sober, I, I would, I would literally shoot myself in the face, but you know, what can you do? Anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. No one wants to hear about all that stuff because I, because uh, then with the more, the more you start talking about all that kind of stuff and part, you know, so it, it's kind of like when you start talking about fast food, you then start to want it. You then start, mm, I could do it with a drink, drink. I could do it with some, you know I mean, you start getting a bit crazy. So let's stop, let's stop. In, let's stop fantasizing about all that stuff and concentrate on laughing at these comedians, right? Let's laugh at these fucking comedians.